I'm sure a lot of you are going to sit there over the next several weeks and decide to partake in WWE's new season of Tough Enough on the USA Network, and I most certainly will not be one of you. The WWE already wastes enough of my time with Raw every week, I watch NXT every week, I watch all of their special events. I'm not about to give this company another hour of my life each and every single week when I really frankly see no reason to do so because the way I've always looked at Tough Enough is that while I like the concept and while I think it could be good things, it's always been something that's been relatively poor, ex poorly executed by the WWE and frankly to me has always been just one big colossal waste of fucking time. We're getting now to what is this going to be the sixth season of Tough Enough? And I, I just, at this point in time, really don't see the purpose for it. I don't. I know what the WWE will say the purpose is. It's another attempt to try and find a talent, maybe find a hidden gem, which is admirable and understandable when you're in the type of environment. It's another platform for the WWE to get different types of eyeballs on their product, to have another show out there to make more money. I understand that. Another admirable quality about it. But at the end of the day, I've just never really felt that WWE has fully embraced the tough enough concept. And I've never really thought that they've had a specific vision or direction for what they wanted to do with the tough enough concept, the tough enough contestants, and ultimately the tough enough winners. And frankly, again, if you look throughout the history of Tough Enough, it really hasn't been this great proving ground for future stars of the WWE and most certainly hasn't been a place where they could find lots of key valuable contributors. And in many ways, again, it's largely been a waste of time where the winners more often than not make little to no contributions at all. And it's often, if anybody makes any contributions, it's the ones that were eliminated early on in the show, if any damn body. Let's look back at the history of Tough Enough, just to kind of emphasize what a waste of time this has been over the years. You go back to the first season. Your winners were Nydia and Maven. I always liked Nydia. I, I, I get down with Nydia. I thought she was good. I'm sorry. Maven was the shit. He was boring as fuck. And to this day, it still baffles me that they once had him not only win Tough Enough, mind you, but eliminate The Undertaker at a royal fucking rumble. Those are your two winners. Nydia, who had talent, and frankly to me, Maven, that really did it. Who else was on that first season of Tough Enough that's notable? Chris Nowinski, who's more notable now for his crusade against concussions, and he's all about education for head trauma. That was one of the other big contributors out of that first season of Tough Enough. The longest term impact that the WWE or the wrestling business, frankly, got out of that first season of Tough Enough was a ring announcer, Josh Matthews. So you basically held tough enough long term to find, <laughs> not a ring announcer, but a commentator. A long term one that was frankly always on the B shows at that. Look at the second season. Your two winners were Jackie Gata and Shaniqua. All the while, guys like Matt Morgan and Kenny King didn't get close. Yes, I remember Matt Morgan had the injury. I think it was a knee injury at the time, and he couldn't go on. But Matt Morgan and Kenny King were thrust aside for such great legends as Shaniqua and Jackie Gata. Just think about that for a second. The third season, you know, Matt Capitelli, unfortunately, he had his own little medical issue. Uh, but was he really much of a talent, honestly? You know, you had the winner. At least they got that right for one of the seasons, John Morrison. But this is the same Johnny Nitro, John Morrison, <laughs> that Kevin Dunn during the tryout said, no, absolutely not. I do not like him. And he goes on to win the fucking Tough Enough season. But again, Tough Enough winner, you know, had a following, got over to a certain degree. But the company never went all the way with him. He never became a world champion. And then you got that fourth season, that million-dollar edition of Tough Enough that was being featured prominently in the SmackDown brand at that time. And the winner was fucking Daniel Pewter Putter, whatever the fuck that putz's name was. Oh, look at me. I almost made Kurt Angle top, tap out to a Kimura on SmackDown. Get the fuck out of here. Whoever voted for him should be ashamed of themselves. That was the winner of a season of Tough Enough was Daniel Pewter. Pewter, what a putter, whatever the fuck. It doesn't matter. All the while... 
freaking boogeyman was on that show. He gets disqualified because he lied about his age, and he had more of an impact than the freaking Tough Enough winner. And all the while, guys like Mike Mizan and The Miz and Ryan Reeves Ryback get passed over for Daniel fucking Pewter. So in your four years of doing Tough Enough, your winners were Nitty and Maven, Jackie Gata Shaniqua, John Morrison, and Daniel Pewter. The only one that had any real long-lasting impact of any kind out of all of those four seasons winners was John Morrison. And none of them ever became a fucking world champion for the company. And then when you had that season a few years ago with Stone Cold Steve Austin as the host, you're like, um, you know, it's a good time maybe to bring back this concept since reality television is so prevalent in our society. Unfortunately, uh, maybe they'll get it right this time. Maybe they'll actually find talent. Maybe they'll actually find guys that can contribute. And frankly, you looked at season five. It was a bunch of ham and eggers. It was a bunch of fucking jobbers. It's like out of all the thousands upon thousands upon thousands of fucking entries you got, this was the best of the fucking best. No wonder the wrestling business is in the fucking shape it is. Look at the piss poor talent that was on that fucking show. There were a couple of people that were maybe worth the shit, but none of them actually got to the point where they could actually be worth the shit. The final two came down between a guy who did gay wrestling videos in Luke, if you remember, and then don't forget Silent Range Andy Levine. Oh, he's going to be a good one. He's going to be a good one. The only person from season five that has mattered at all to the WWE was the first person that got fucking knocked out because she loved a match between, wasn't it, Molina and Alicia Fox, and that's Cameron. You want to talk about total waste of time. Season 5 was the epitome of a waste of time, which is a big reason why I won't waste my time with season fucking 6. And frankly, I don't understand why any of you would either. If the WWE is so desperately looking for talent, maybe they should go look for some on the independent scene in this country and overseas. They could probably find guys that have worked harder, paid their dues, and are more properly prepared and equipped to come into NXT and be something and perhaps someday become a main roster talent. Instead, what you've got is a bunch of people that could basically go through WWE fantasy camp, and that's exactly what the fuck it is. Here's what I'll do if they do another season of Tough Enough. I'll go hit the weights. I'll go hit the gym. I'll put on 30 pounds. I'll tell them I'm 25, and then I'll become a finalist for fucking Tough Enough. That's how stupid this shit is. What a colossal waste of time. I don't give a damn who they've got judging. Ooh, they've got Paige judging and Daniel Bryan and Hulk Hogan, brother. All that just means it's going to fucking suck. Chris Jericho, now the ultimate WWE kiss ass as the host. Oh, he's so controversial. He's so this. Now we understand all along why all of a sudden Jericho flipped in terms of his perspective and became so pro-WWE and so much of the bullshit. It was all about positioning himself for this spot as the host to tough enough. Good for you, Chris Jericho. You sold out respected principles for the sake of mainstream television exposure and a nice payout. You understood how to work the wrestling business, brother. I mean, that's exactly what this is going to be. I looked at the roster. You got a bunch of guys. Whoopee. Same old shit. Look like a bunch of ham and eggers. The girls are so-so. Some are somewhat attractive. Some not so much. You've got one token black guy because you just got to have one. But God forbid you'd actually want to have multiples of them or all different types of ethnicities represented in this fucking country on this goddamn show. Ultimately, if you really have to watch Tough Enough, just watch the first two or three episodes. One of those people that will be eliminated will probably have a much bigger impact than anybody that goes on much farther in the show, and especially the person that ends up the winners or the runners-up. It's a waste of time. Tough Enough always has been a waste of time and will continue to be a waste of time. So hopefully you'll join me in not wasting your time by watching this bullshit.